How do you want that cook? Run to a crisp or bloody as hell? Bloody as hell. Uh, it's a Quentin Tarantino movie. Of course, bloody as hell. Hey everybody and welcome to another movie night. I'm Jackie and tonight, you saw it, we are watching Pulp Fiction. <sighs> there are really two reasons that I haven't watched this movie yet. The first is just because the longer you wait to watch something, I think the lower priority it becomes. New things come up and it just gets pushed further and further down the list and eventually you never get to it. So this is just one that's been pushed down the list for me and now I finally have an excuse to get to it. And the second reason is because genuinely for a long time, I didn't want to watch it. For a while, I had no interest in Quentin Tarantino, and then I went to film school. <laughs> and obviously Quentin Tarantino is an incredibly well-known, incredibly talented, and influential director, and we wound up studying him for one of my classes. So after that, I gained a much bigger appreciation for Quentin Tarantino and had a desire to go back and watch Pulp Fiction, but just never really got around to it because there was a lot of other stuff to watch. So without further ado, I'm going to get into Pulp Fiction because I think I've waited long enough and I think you guys have waited long enough. As always, please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Drop me a comment. What was your first experience with Quentin Tarantino? Did you like him? Did you dislike him? What is your favorite Quentin Tarantino movie? Publicly shame me for having never seen this up to this point. Let me know. I would love to hear. And as always, redder is better. Hit the big red subscribe button and check me out on Patreon where you can check out the full-length reaction to this movie along with everything else I've done on the channel and some fun exclusive content. So without further ado, let's get into Pulp Fiction. Oh, I'm excited about this! Finally get to say I've seen Pulp Fiction. Pulp, a so soft, moist, shapeless mass of matter, a magazine or book containing lurid subject matter and being characteristically printed on rough, unfinished paper. You're never gonna have to give me quack, but I'm never gonna do it again. After tonight. Famous last words. I know her. I recognize her from somewhere. I don't know from where. A few moments later. I know what I know her from. Hunger Games. Nuts and Bolts. I think she was nuts between the two of them. It was her and Jeffrey Wright that were nuts and bolts. That's where I know her from. Cleans the place out. They don't even lift a fucking finger. The very long stagnant take. Single camera angle long take. That's a very Tarantino thing. <laughs> getting paid $1.50 an hour. Really give a fuck you're stealing from the owner? I've worked minimum wage jobs. We definitely don't care enough to put our lives on the line. Everybody be cool, this is a robbery! Any of oh. you fucking pricks move! And I'll um, execute every motherfucking last one of you! I had no idea that this is where this was from. Oh my God. I know this because Evan Rachel Wood did a dub smash to it. If you've never seen the compilation of Westworld cast dub smash, it's hysterical. Any of you fucking pricks move! And I'll execute every motherfucking last one of you! I had no idea that this was from this movie. Oh my god, I know that line! Ah! 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 <laughs> Christopher Walken! What? Bruce Willis is in this? I didn't know Bruce Willis was in this. I am continuing my trend. I'm accidentally continuing my trend of Bruce Willis. All right. Wait, did Sally edit this one? Sally Monkey! Yay! So if you don't know the story behind Sally, there's a joke on any Quentin Tarantino set up until she sadly passed away. Anytime someone made a gaffe or a blooper, they were just the camera rolling and they weren't doing anything. They would just turn to the camera and go, hi, Sally. I mean, that's the right that cops Samson don't have. <laughs> Oh, man, I'm going. Okay, so these two are wearing suits, so not cops. My first thought is men in black. Like bounty hunters or something? POV shot! We should have shotguns with this kind of deal. Shotguns? Okay, what are these people? Are they bounty hunters? POV shot is very Quentin Tarantino. Like, shooting out through the, the trunk like that. Well, the way they pick TV shows is they make one show. That show's called a pilot. Mm-hmm. And also another very trademark Quentin Tarantino thing is talking about movies and TV within the movie or TV. So what he do, fucker? No, 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 nothing that bad. Gave her a foot massage. Feet. Here's a thing for feet. Does anybody remember in Inglorious Bastards when Christoph Waltz was examining the shoe and Bridget von Hammersmark's foot? Very Quentin Tarantino. It was a foot massage. A foot massage is nothing. I give my mother a foot massage. Well, that's nice of you. It was the same fucking ball pump. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Long tracking shot. <laughs> Don't be telling me about foot massages. I'm the foot fucking master. 
Are they about to walk into a room and just murder a bunch of people or something? Is that why they're having such a casual conversation right now? You know, I'm kind of tired. I can use a foot massage myself. <laughs> yeah, let's back off. I'm getting a little pissed here. God, this is such, this is one long take. This has all been one long take. Fuck a Marcellus knew it. Are we gonna meet this Marcellus? Is he their boss? Come on, let's get into character. Get into character? What are they? Well, he's going out of town in Florida and he asked me if I'd take care of her while he's gone. Oh, be careful. Take care? No, man, just take her out. <laughs> yes, be very specific. Phrases like take care of can come across two different ways. It's not a date. Uh-huh. What are they? You know who we are? No. We're associates of your business partner, Marcellus Wallace. You do remember your business partner, don't you? Are they muscle? Are they the leg breakers or something? Looks like me and Vincent caught you boys at breakfast. Sorry about that. <laughs> this is so Quentin Tarantino. The very casual conversation before someone's about to get murdered or have their legs broken. This scene is very, very reminiscent to the opening scene of Inglorious Bastards when Christoph Waltz is sitting there literally over the table, drinking milk, talking about murdering Jews. This is so Quentin Tarantino. I do love the taste of a good burger. Mm. There's so much tension right now. Yeah, they're, they're about to break some legs or something. You mind if I have some of your tasty beverage to wash this down? Go right ahead. Of course not, because I'm pretty sure you're here to break my legs or murder me or something because we're building so much tension toward it. The juxtaposition of the super casual with the massacre that's about to happen. Won't you tell my man Vincent where you got the shit here at? It's over there. I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. And there goes the casual tone. Also, he showed us his gun. You notice there's been no music yet either. It's all been complete silence. It's just playing on the tone of their conversation. Six, six, six. <laughs> Ooh, light coming out of the briefcase. I just want you to know how... <laughs> you stay in an inferior position. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? <laughs> yeah. And my son <laughs> Wallace don't like to be fucked by anybody except Mrs. Wallace. I mean, that's fair. Ezekiel 25, 17. The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the inequities of the selfish and the tyranny of evil men. Hang on a second. I, I don't know where I heard this, but I think that's not a real Bible verse, but isn't that on Nick Fury's tombstone? I think that's where that's from. I think that, I think that's what that is. When I lay my vengeance upon thee. <laughs> oh my God. Yep, yep, murders happen. Bullets flying, yep. Using a Bible verse as hitmen. All right. Oh, Bruce Willis. Okay, so we have another segmented non-linear storyline here. Very Tarantino. But that's a fact the life your ass is gonna have to get realistic about. Long take. How many fights do you think you got in you anyway? Is he a boxer or something? Boxers don't have an old time. Boxer, thing. yep. He is not blinking. Oh my goodness. This is one long take and he is not blinking. What's with the band-aid? That's pride fucking with you. Oh, is he being paid to throw the fight? That's gonna go horribly wrong. What? Where's the big man? We went from suits to this? Too much blood on their suits? Chew my food, my mouth closed, laughter fucking jokes, and that's it. That's a good strategy. That's not what's gonna happen, but that's a good strategy. <laughs> Penis. Wow. I'll let it do. It's a great book on piercing. Well, okay. So I know Tarantino has an affection for non literary storytelling. I'm so confused right now, and I think I'm supposed to be, and I'm trying to mentally hold on to every little bit and every little scene, but I'm waiting for all of this to come together and just explode. But this one is a fucking madman. The shoes displayed on the wall here. Tarantino has a foot thing. Is this all in one day? Is this like his long day? This feels like this is taking place over. Come inside and make yourself a drink. Mia. That's right. This is all happening over a day or two leading up to his non-date with his boss's wife. What? Is she watching him on the security cameras? 
Does she just get enjoyment out of forking with these people, knowing what her husband will do to them? Go make yourself a drink and I'll be down in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Close up on lips, that's another very Tarantino thing. Just something you see a lot. Feet again. Tarantino has a foot fetish. Oh, and Thurman! Oh, she plays the wife, that makes sense. You can get a steak here, daddy-o. Don't be a... Mm. That's a postmodern, also Tarantino thing, using overlays, text and general overlays on screen. Don't be a square. <laughs> that was more of a rectangle though. I feel like I've heard of Jackrabbit Slims. This looks like fun. It's like an arcade for grown-ups. Oh, I get it. It's classic Hollywood. You have Elvis playing, you've got Marilyn serving. I get it. Okay, it's very Hollywood. Long tracking shot again. One long take. Oh my god, the car is the table. That's so cool! I want to go to a place like that. I think it's like a wax museum with a pulse. <laughs> I am, buddy. Can I get you? And I want to go. Is that Steve Buscemi? How do you want that cooked? Run to a crisp or bloody as hell? Bloody as hell. Uh, it's a Quentin Tarantino movie. Of course, bloody as hell. Oh, she's got mischief on her mind. And now I'm definitely not going to tell you because it's been built up too much. He is literally under obligation to laugh at your jokes, honey. He builds tension through silence really well. There's very little dialogue. Don't you hate that? Uncomfortable silences. <laughs> Speaking of silence, that is a sign of someone you're comfortable with if you don't feel the need to That's talk That's when constantly. you know you found somebody really special. Yep. Oh, she's got mischief on her mind. And in her posture. Oh, he is struggling. This woman is getting into trouble tonight. Whether he likes it or not, she is getting him into trouble. Isn't it more uh, exciting when you don't have permission? <laughs> oh, she is trouble. So world famous Jackrabbit Slims twist contest. Is this the iconic dance scene? Our first contestants. Right here. Yep, she's got trouble on her mind. I do believe Marcellus, my husband, your boss, told you to take me out and do whatever I wanted. <laughs> now I want to dance. I want to win. I want that trophy. Right. So dance good. <laughs> Here we go. And we're back with feet. Good Lord, so many feet. <gasps> Chuck Berry! It was a teenage wedding and the old folks wished him well. <laughs> the twist. <laughs> Chuck Berry. I know this scene! Yes, yes, okay, everybody knows this scene. The very, very iconic twist scene, yep. So admittedly, this is very familiar to me because if anyone else is a Gilmore Girls fan, they did an episode with a Quentin Tarantino themed party and they had people recreating the twist with this song playing. This exists everywhere in pop culture. <laughs> Waiting and the old folks wish them well. Oh, we're fading out. Do they win the trophy? <gasps> they won the trophy! Well done, bravo. Well done. Of course, it wouldn't be iconic if they didn't win for it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You two are awfully <laughs> close! Oh dear. Oh dear. I sense mischief. I sense mischief. One drink and that's it. <laughs> Don't be rude. Drink your drink. But do it quickly. And don't get into any trouble. That's not what's gonna happen. That is definitely not what's gonna happen. Okay, this song is actually starting to creep me out a little bit. Girl, you'll be a woman soon. This is creeping me out a little bit. Oh. It's his coat. She's wearing his coat. Those are his drugs. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Go home, jerk off, and that's all you're gonna do. No, it's not. She's taking your drugs. Party's just getting started for her. Oh. Ooh. Oh. <gasps> that's not good. Is she dead? <gasps> Oh my god! Come on, girl. We're getting out of here. We gotta walk now. We gotta walk now. Maybe, um, hospital might be a good place to go? Oh my god. 
This is how she ends up in a coma for Kill Bill. <laughs> oh, shirt! Oh my god! Yo, if she croaks on me, I'm a fucking grease spot. Yeah! Jesus. Don't do drugs, kids. Please don't do drugs. Alright, what I need is a big fat magic marker. I think we've passed touching her feet at this point. Also, while you shouldn't do drugs at all, don't do drugs where you don't know where they came from, what they are, what they'll do to you. Please don't. Oh, fucking more needles, Jesus. No, 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 man, I ain't get, you, you, you're gonna give it a shot. You're gonna give it a shot. That is a giant forking needle. She's got a breastplate. You gotta pierce through that. So what you gotta do is you gotta- No, my like God, that. I don't wanna see this. 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 <gasps> Jesus! She's got a forking needle sticking out of her chest. Ah! Forking hell! That was unpleasant. I'm really glad she's alive, but that was incredibly unpleasant. What's your thoughts on, on, on how to handle this? You gonna tell your husband, is what he wants to know. Am I gonna die over this? I'm of the opinion that if Marcel's lived his whole life, he don't need to know nothing about this incident. Mm-hmm. If Marcellus knew about this incident, I'd be in as much trouble as you. I seriously doubt that. <laughs> I can keep a secret if you can. Mmm, two can keep a secret if one of you is dead. Now if you excuse me, I'm gonna go home and have a heart attack. <laughs> That's fair. That's understandable. Do you want to hear my Fox Force 5 joke? <laughs> I think he earned it after that. Baby Tomato starts lagging behind and Pop Tomato goes back and squishes him. Ketchup. <gasps> oh my god. That is a terrible joke. This here is Captain Coons. He was in the POW camp with Daddy. Oh. Christopher Walken. He has Christopher Walken in his early movies and Christoph Waltz in his later movies. <laughs> this watch was on your Daddy's wrist when he was shot down over Hanoi. This is really sweet but sad. So he hid it. In one place he knew he could hide something, his ass. Yep, I was about to say that. He died of dysentery. He gave me the watch. Uh, I hid this uncomfortable hunk of metal up my ass two years. Oh my god! This very charming story just took an interesting turn. Little man, I gave the watch to you. You've cleaned it, right? Just double checking? Time to throw your fight! The gold watch. Okay, so this is like his part two. Got it, okay. So we have now completely switched timelines and perspectives. Again, very Quentin Tarantino. It's non-linear, jarring storytelling. Oh, I'm Richard, a tragedy like this can't help but shake the world of boxing to its very- Wait, tragedy? Wait, who died? Wait, what just happened? Did he accidentally kill the guy he was supposed, he was supposed to throw the fight with? Wait, did he kill him on purpose or did he kill him on accident? You are the fighter? Let me give you that idea. <laughs> what happened? He's dead. Oh, sure, he didn't know. He refused to throw the fight. That's what it feel like. Killing a man. Well, to be fair, he just found out, so... You are the first person I've ever met who has killed somebody. Only that you're aware has killed somebody. Technically, you could have met someone who's killed somebody and you didn't know. What does it feel like to kill a man? Honey, you need help. I didn't know he was dead until you told me he was dead. Yeah, say, he literally just found out. He hasn't had time to process it yet. So you have it all by tomorrow night? Wait, did he double cross Marcellus? Did he tell him that he was going to throw the fight and then purposely not do it? Hard day at the office? <laughs> you could say that. Got in a fight. <laughs> You're so funny, Bruce Willis. I don't give a damn what men find attractive. Good for you, girl. You don't listen to the radio? I never listen to your fights. That's fair. That's understandable. That'd be stressful. Are you still retiring? Sure am. It's like all worked out in the finish. Not over yet. We're not at the finish yet, baby. Yeah, no. Don't count your chickens before they hatch. I'm guessing he double-crossed Marcellus, and yeah, I don't I don't see that ending well. If they find us, they'll kill us, won't they? Yeah. But they won't find us, will they? You sure about that? Do you love me? Very, very much. Is she gonna die? I get a sense that she's gonna die. Or he's gonna die. One of these two or both is gonna die. If we wanted, we could live in Bora Bora. You betcha. That's not gonna happen. You don't have two characters sitting around talking about their dreams for the future and then have those dreams happen. It's not gonna happen. 
Sweet dream, Jelly Bean. <laughs> One long take. Oh, poor man's exhausted. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, let him sleep. He's had a long night. And we're back with the toothbrushing. Oh my goodness, that was an interesting cut. Yeah, that was a great transition. The parallel of closing on her brushing her teeth the night before and him asleep in that position and then waking up with the same. Why don't you get up and we'll get some breakfast? One more kiss and I'll get up. This is interesting that we're focusing on the violence while they're chatting. Where's my watch? Oh, the gold watch. Where's the gold watch? Fuck! Fuck! Fuck, motherfucker! Oh, oh sure! Jesus! Oh my god! She left that at the apartment. It's not your fault. Is he gonna go back, try to go back and get it or something? It's like I gotta go back to my apartment. Yep, he's going back for it. Oh, shirt's gonna go sideways. Oh, this is about to get really messy. Take your hand and have me back before you can say blueberry pie. Blueberry pie. Oh, that was cute. Eh, he won't be. He won't be. Ugh. This is the Jackrabbit Slims here. Jackrabbit Slims? Who's talking about Jackrabbit Slims? These all have to be connected somehow. Because, like, we haven't seen the diner robbers. I have a bad feeling about this. I have a very bad feeling about this long tracking shot. Long one take tracking shot. So far so good. I still don't trust it. There it is. This segment is called the gold watch. It's making me nervous. Why are you waiting around? Why are you wasting time here? You should be getting in and out as fast as possible. You know they're gonna come looking for your, oh God. Something's gonna happen while they're in the toaster and they're gonna burn. Oh, shirt! I told you, don't dilly-dally! Oh, dip. Now he's holding it. Oh, dip. Huh? Well, hi there. Oh, shirt! Oh my god! That was not on my bingo card. Oh my god! I did not see that one coming. But was Vincent there by himself? Well, now he can say he really does know what it feels like to kill somebody and no, immediately not be informed about it later. Oh no. Oh no. Happy music. I don't trust happy music. I don't trust happy music. That's Marcellus. Oh my God, that's Marcellus. Oh my God. Move. Oh, shirt. I said I didn't trust it. I said I didn't trust it. He's alive. If he's alive, he's coming for you. I'll be damned. <gasps> oh, oh, Jesus! All the poor extras in Tarantino movies. What are you? Dead extra number two. Brilliant. Okay, well, he's, a he's in just as bad a shape as you. Somebody's gonna yeah, get, that get the gun. Fucking head blown. Oh, shh. Oh, ouch. Oh. Brief shining moment and then shirt goes sideways. Yeah, the spider just caught a couple of flies. Oh, dip. Who did he call? Oh. Oh, dip. Now you're both forked. That doesn't look fun. This, this looks bad. I don't even want to say what I'm... Every possibility is more disturbing than the last. <laughs> They're both like, I still want to kill you, but we both need to get out of this. What yeah. the... What the hell? What in God's name? There are many, 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 many very horrible thoughts running through my head right now and I'm very concerned. And that I think is the point of this scene. You're left in awkward silence to suspense to let your mind just run free of all the possibilities. I have no words. I literally have no words. I don't wanna know. Neither do you, Bruce Willis. Weapon. That'll do. Yep. Hammer will do. Hammer will do in a pinch. That is an incredibly effective weapon in a pinch. So is a baseball bat. Not as good in close quarters, though. Chainsaw. Wow, we are literally just working our way up the scale here. What did you see? What is better than the chainsaw? Katana. Oh my god. Is that a recurring theme in 
Quentin Tarantino films, because I know in Kill Bill, Uma Thurman uses a katana. Damn, he is really, really drawing out every single second, building up as much tension as possible. There is no rush to the pacing of this movie. I really didn't want to know. That is so forked up. That is so forked up. That is unfortunately where my mind- Oh, God. That's disgusting. And forked up on so many- ah! You're not gonna hear me say he didn't deserve it. You want that gun, don't you, Zed? Reach for it, I dare you. Step aside, Butch. Yeah, Butch is much less of a priority to him right now. Yep, 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 yep. I'm on- I'm on Marcella's side at this moment. Yeah, you deserve that. I'm pretty fucking far from okay. That's understandable. That is a forked up situation. <laughs> and again, we are drawing out every single second of it. What now? That's a really good question. I'm gonna get medieval on your ass. Sounds about right. You guys picked the wrong dudes to fork with. So we cool? Are we cool? Yeah, we cool. <laughs> get your ass out of here. Well, that was a horrifyingly disturbing yet fortuitous turn of events. What is with the band-aid though? Why do we keep seeing the band-aid on the back of his neck? I am disturbed to say that was one of the possibilities that was in my mind about what was happening. And yeah, disturbed is the word. Where did you get this motorcycle? Don't worry it's about not it. It's a motorcycle, baby. It's a chopper. Come on, let's go. <laughs> it's a very long story. I'll tell you later. Well, no, I'll tell you parts of it later. I won't tell you the whole thing later. This has been without a doubt the single weirdest fucking day of my life. I'm that, yeah, yeah, I think that's an understatement. Yep, and it probably will be. That was interesting. The Bonnie situation. Okay, we are moving right along. Are these, how, how are these all connected? And my son is Wallace don't want to be fucked by anybody except me. Oh, this was the, not the opening scene, but the, the first scene with John Travolta and Samuel L. Jackson. Ezekiel 25, 17. So we're literally hopping around here. Oh, right, because when we saw them after that, they said something had happened and they had to change their clothes. I was wondering, I'm like, they wouldn't just be blood spatter. They knew that was going to happen. Shepherds the weak. We're, li we're jumping back and forth through time here. These are alternate timelines. And they're all connected. I bet they're all connected. Yep, yep, yep. Postmodern film, nonlinear storytelling. Vengeance yep, and yep. All right, I get it now. I get it now. Die, you mother! Oh, damn! Did he seriously miss? Wait, did he miss them with every single shot? Is that why there are bullet holes behind him? Behind them? Jesus! We should be fucking dead, man. Yeah, you should. This was divine intervention. <laughs> you know what divine intervention is? Yes, plot armor. That's another word for plot armor. That means that God came down from heaven and stopped the bullets? That's right. It means the writer wrote it that way. Can we go now? Wait, but why do they have to change their clothes? From here on in, you consider my ass retired. <laughs> Say near-death experiences like that can change your life perspective. Well, you gotta have an opinion. <laughs> I mean, do you think that God came down from heaven and stopped the Oh, shit! Man, I didn't, I didn't mean to shoot the son of a bitch. The gun went off. I don't know why. That's why they changed their clothes. Hey, fuck! What the fuck you just doing with towel, man? <laughs> Drying my hands. Well, you're supposed to wash them first. Well, you wash me, wash them. I watched you get them wet. <laughs> it's a very Tarantino thing. Just the juxtaposition of the craziness of the blood and just household everyday things. But just don't put me in this position, all right? All right. The casual nature around murder, massacre, and bloodshed in Tarantino movies. Mmm. <laughs> this is some serious gourmet shit. Me and Vin oh my god. Tarantino has to cameo in every single movie. Here he is. Jimmy, you know I ain't seen no shit. Did you notice a sign in the front of my house that said dead storage? Wow. Bonnie comes home and finds a dead body in her house. I'm gonna get divorced. At the least. <laughs> There's nothing that you're gonna say that's gonna make me forget that I love my wife, is there? I hope not. That's devotion right there. I appreciate his loyalty. You don't fuck my shit up. You're fucking my shit up right now. You've already stained my bath towels. You got to appreciate what an explosive element this Bonnie situation is. 
Ain't no telling what she's liable to do. Is this a hypothetical we're seeing right now? And wait for the wolf who should be coming directly. The wolf. You send in the wolf? Who's the wolf? What's the wolf? That's all you had to say. <laughs> He's the cleaner. Oh my goodness. What is he driving? What are we driving? Acura, what the hell is that? Jimmy, right? This is your house? Sure is. Oh my god, I know this actor! I can't think of his name. But the first time I ever saw him was in National Treasure. You got a corpse in a car, minus a head in a garage. Take me to it. <laughs> this man is efficient. While I do not condone his job, I appreciate his efficiency. I appreciate that he's good at it. Don't I smell some coffee back there? Would you make me a cup? I, th I think we can spare this man some coffee. How do you want to take it? Lots of cream, lots of sugar. <laughs> this is so Tarantino. Everything around something chaotic is just so calm. Hmm? Good coffee. <laughs> Boys, get to work. I said a please would be nice. Oh, dude, this is not the time for that. You do not talk back to the wolf. Your help is definitely appreciated. Mr. Wolf, I don't mean disrespect, okay? I respect you. Then shut up. So pretty please, with sugar on top, clean the fucking car. <laughs> don't be looking at me like that, all right? I can feel your look. That's because you're behaving like a child. This is our best linen here. <laughs> Dude. You an oak man? Oak's nice. Everyone knows that closets, closets are, are made, made of cedar. cedar. This is some fucked up repugnant shit. Yes, it is. You the motherfuckers should be on brain detail. True. We fucking switch it. You break it, you buy it. Or in this case, you kill it, you clean it. Phase one is complete. Clean the car, which moves us right along to phase two. Clean you two. Yeah, just go hose them down. Strip. <laughs> All the way to your bare ass. <laughs> You've both been to county before, I'm sure. Here it comes. Yep, hose them down. <laughs> this is the price of your mistake. It is not a high enough price, but it is indeed the price of your mistake. You deserve much worse for murder. You're dry enough. Toss them their clothes. Yep. <laughs> All right. Perfect. There we go. We've come full circle now. You guys look like... What do they look like, Jimmy? Dorks. <laughs> Bear in mind that they are wearing your clothes, honey. Vincent, you follow my Acura. Acura? I thought it was an Acura. Tony Stark drives an Acura. When he's not driving an Audi. If I get my car back any different than I gave it, Monster Joe's gonna be disposing of two bodies. <laughs> That's fair. You are allowed one fork up today. You do not get a second. What's with the outfits? <laughs> are you guys going to a volleyball game or something? <laughs> yeah, really, and thank you very much, Mr. Wolf. <laughs> Shut up and get out of my sight. <laughs> I'm gonna go for some breakfast. You feel like having breakfast with me? Everybody wants to have breakfast. Oh my god, do they all end up at the diner? They all end up at the diner together. Stick up at the diner. You really thinking about quitting? The life? Yeah, most definitely. He came so close to death that I, oh, is that why he wasn't with John Travolta when Butch shot Vincent? Is that why he wasn't with Vincent when Vincent got killed? Look, my friend, this is just where you and I differ. Go some! Yep, 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 yep. We came full circle. Moving timelines. Yep, yep, yep. I'm gonna take a shit. Why do you have to tell us? I'm with Uma Thurman. You give way too much information, sir. When I had what alcoholics refer to as a moment of clarity. <laughs> and he's having a moment of clarity right before the place gets robbed. Oh, what's gonna happen? What is gonna happen? Any of you fucking pricks move! And I'll execute every one of your motherfuckers! That was a different line. That was a different take and a different line. Any of you fucking pricks move! And I'll execute every motherfucking last one of you! You pick the day where he feels the protection of God. Oh my God. I'm the manager here. There's no problem. No problem at all. You gonna give me a problem? Nope. Oh, John Travolta's in the bathroom. You forgot to mention there was someone in the bathroom with a gun. Fuck yeah. down! Well done. Oh my god, yep, he's in the bathroom, completely oblivious. Wait a second, that's the book he was reading when he came out of the bathroom at Butch's place. Good! Now what is out? Yep, yep, you picked the wrong day in the wrong place. What am I waiting for? In a fucking bag. <laughs>
Oh my God, is John Travolta gonna walk out and just be like, dude, what happened? Oh, dip. He looks very casual. You should be very nervous at how casual he looks right now. I hate to shatter your ego, but this ain't the first time I've had a gun pointed at me. Not even the first time today. No problem, I got it under control. Do you? Do you now? If you don't open that case, I'm gonna unload in your fucking face. This man is not afraid of you. You are a child to him. Three. Okay, Ringo, you win. Nope, 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 nope. He's gonna shoot him through the briefcase. He's gonna shoot him through the briefcase. Lit from inside. What is it? What's in the briefcase? We've opened it twice and we haven't seen inside. God damn it, what is it? I wanna know. <laughs> chill out, honey yeah, bunny! Out. Chill! Just chill out, honey bunny! Everybody just calm down! Come on, Yolanda, what's Fonzie like? I don't know. Cool. Correct the mood. <laughs> Everybody's gonna be cool. Okay, now you let him go! Yolanda, I thought you were gonna be cool. Yep. Yolanda, be cool. Is that where that came from? But you happen to pull this shit while I'm in a transitional period and I don't want to kill you. <laughs> you found him on his act of God day. Vincent, <laughs> be cool! <laughs> yep. everybody be cool. Proud of you, honey bunny. I love you. Oh my God. Which one is it? It's the one that says bad motherfucker. <laughs> I really do appreciate Quentin Tarantino's ability to be cool during crazy scenes like this. It's really, really good writing and excellent execution. That's it. It does! It literally does! Okay, put it in your pocket. It's yours. Dip! That was with a hell of a lot in 1994. Jules, you give that fucking Nimrod $1,500 and I'll shoot him on general principle. <laughs> You've done enough damage today, Vincent. I never gave much thought to what it meant. I just thought it was some cold-blooded shit to say to a motherfucker. <laughs> and I am the tyranny of evil men. This is not what he expected when he tried to rob this diner. Did he just take a bite? Yep, let me finish my breakfast. I think we should be leaving now. I think that would also be it, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna concur that statement. Yep, probably for the best. <laughs> oh my god. They're trying so hard to be cool, but I'm sorry guys. Not dressed like that. <laughs> be cool. Be cool. Wait, that's it? Oh. Oh, shirt. Oh, my brain is just, yeah, spinning. Okay. Hang on. I'm gonna take a minute. So I kid you not, guys. I sat here for almost an hour after watching Pulp Fiction, trying to just get my thoughts in order enough to give a proper analysis, and I struggled because this is a really, really iconic but complicated movie to properly talk about. And especially for me because I do enjoy analyzing films and I enjoy talking about what makes them the way that they are. But when I studied Quentin Tarantino in film school, I studied him in the context of postmodernism. I had a, an entire semester class on this style of filmmaking and Quentin Tarantino is the most quintessential postmodern filmmaker, and Pulp Fiction was the movie that sort of ushered that era into the mainstream. Postmodernism is a, an era in filmmaking, and the theory of postmodernism is that style is more important than story. So the actual story that you're telling, the narrative, the plot, is less important than the style of filmmaking, then how it appears on screen, then how it is told. So for instance, Pulp Fiction is told out of order. It's told in segments, they're chapters, but it's non-linear. And so you get, you start at the end and then work your way back to it and you're told in pieces so that you have to get to a certain point before you fully understand how they're all connected. That is a really common trait in postmodernism. A second trait of postmodernism is subjective filmmaking. So for instance, subjective camera angles, Quentin Tarantino, constantly, you're seeing through someone's perspective. He shoots up out of the trunk of the car. You're seeing from a bird's eye view. It's incredibly, incredibly subjective. Quentin Tarantino, postmodernism. Thirdly is things like overlays on screen. When Uma Thurman said, don't be a square, and you see the square pop up on screen, 
that is something that is a trait of postmodern filmmaking and something we take for granted now because think about when you see someone texting on screen and their text bubbles pop up. That's something that didn't exist prior to this era and something that we take for granted now, but something that was so iconic with Pulp Fiction. And a lot of people have commented that Pulp Fiction, even though it's this massively successful blockbuster type movie, it feels like an indie film. And that is why it's so incredible and so iconic because it turned what was an independent style of film something very very obscure and made it popular brought it into the eyes of pop culture and so these styles all of these things that quentin tarantino brings to his films became mainstream were suddenly in front of so many more eyes and so many more people could appreciate it and it was one of those films that people just were so blown away by because it was so different and when I watched it the first time, I kept sitting here trying to figure out what to say, but my mind just kept coming back to, well, what was the point? What was the point? What was the point of this story? Why tell this story? There was no one, there was no one protagonist. There was no beginning, middle, and end. What was the point? And that's what I kept struggling with. And I finally realized the point of postmodernism is that the cinematography, the, the way that you film something, the way it appears on screen, the way that something is written is more important than the story itself. That's not to say that the story isn't important because it was engaging and we all get sucked into this and it absolutely, absolutely is a really well-written film. But what makes it so unique and what makes Quentin Tarantino so unique and why this was so groundbreaking was it was really one of those first big mainstream films that used all of these techniques and showed this type, this style of filmmaking to audiences. And that's what I just, I, I for whatever reason, was having the hardest time getting my brain there and getting my mind to wrap around that concept to be able to properly talk about it. So this has been future Jackie jumping in and giving a little bit more perspective on this movie now that I've had time to wrap my mind around it. And so I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed Pulp Fiction. I hope you enjoyed this reaction. And who knows, maybe I will do a video essay on it. It's, it might just nag at my brain until I do it. I don't know, we'll see. But either way, that's gonna be it. As always, please don't forget to like this video. Drop me a comment. Let me know your thoughts on Pulp Fiction. Please tell me your first experiences with it. I'd love to know. It's a really, really fascinating cultural experience. Redder is better. Hit what may or may not be a big red subscribe button depending on your browser. Check me out on Patreon for the full length version of this reaction as well as all of my other content. And I will see you guys next week for another movie. Bye.